So we're going to be draw, uh, talking about drying herbs. So there's a couple of me different methods of doing it. Um, you almost always, there's a couple of exceptions that you can have. Uh, the drying herbs um, is, um, you could, could uh, dry herbs in the air. Um, and with a couple of exceptions, you always want to dry herbs in the shade. You don't want to dry them in the sun. There's a couple of exceptions to that, um, but for the most part, you want to have it well shaded and well ventilated, particularly in Oregon. Um, you can use screens or baskets, or you can kind of hang your, you can make little bunches and hang them. Um, the, the, the advantages to air drying things is it's easy. Um, you don't need any special, you know, special equipment. Doesn't cost you any money or anything. Um, if you do hang bunches, I recommend using a rubber band and um, the, because your plants are going to shrink. So if you have a bunch of herbs in a piece of string and as those stems shrink, then you're, you're going to, they're going to drop on the ground. Um, Will it ruin them if it drops onto the ground? Depends on how clean your floor is. <laughs> The, um, the disadvantage is it takes longer to air dry, you know, and in Oregon winters, I tend to not air dry stuff. I just air dry things in the, you know, when it's, when it's, uh, the weather is pretty warm. Um, the other thing is, is you have to kind of keep an eye on it. If I have like a bunch of stuff in my office, for example, a bunch of herbs drying, I will tend to forget about them and you can get dust if you don't get them, you know, if you don't process them uh, pretty quickly. So that's, that's the, a disadvantage. Dehydrators are wonderful. I use dehydrators a lot. I have a bunch of different ones. The home kitchen units that you use for fruit that you can get anywhere. Oftentimes you can find them in Goodwill or whatever. These, those work great. You can get a commercial models if you're going to do a lot of stuff. Um, there's solar dehydrators that actually just, they heat, they, they run a little fan and they heat, um, sun doesn't go directly on the herbs. They heat, um, some kind of like a little black thing that will, 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 will do it. Um, you want to dry them at ideally less than 140 degrees. Now, I have not ever dried herbs in the, this way, but I decided to throw that in here because I found this fascinating. But evidently it's a big thing with culinary cooks of drying herbs in the microwave. Really? And supposedly, like for basil and things like that, that you actually preserve more flavor. I have not used it because, but yeah. I just thought that was, that was interesting, so I threw it in there. So after drying herb, that's when you garble or break down your herbs in smaller or more usable forms. And then there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One is milling it, which is reduction to the required particle size. And you can do that by hand, actually, you know, just taking your hands and, and rubbing them together with your herbs. This is one of the better ways to do that. Or you can actually use a, a, a milling tool if you, you know, using a big quantity. You can um, use a sieve and sieve it, and that's more important if there's, if you need to have a uniform size. Um, you can strain it. If you've got um, a, something with a lot of stems, you can put it in a strainer and kind of push it around and it'll, and that works both as a sieve and a straining method. You can also grind stuff like in a hand grinder, mortar and pestle, or a little coffee grinder, or a big grinder, or a food processor. I have um, worked on making powders because we do a lot of various different powders, and it's hell. <laughs> if you have some like expensive tool that you use for powdering herbs, that's what you need, but I don't. I have like home stuff. So we're like powdering them and then sieving them and, and straining them. And it's, you know, it's a big, long process to get the powders for our herbal powders. And then they don't really look the same as, as uh, other powders. So um, uh, it, it, it can be done. 
So one of the things you want to do is you want to break down the herbs so you're not having great big leaves in your storage container and um, uh, uh, great big leaves in your storage container and not um, uh, not enough powder. You want to have you don't you don't want to have too much air and then you also don't want to break it down so much that it's getting that there's I got a little distracted with the fire sorry <laughs> so I'm gonna start all over with this one so you want to break down to not allow too much air in the storage container but don't powder or break down so it's so it, it will that too much air will kind of break down the property so prior to your use you only want to break it down in a medium form not too much not too little Okay, so um, in preparing herbal medicines, um, you want to um, observe cleanliness in the preparation of uh, medicinal plant materials. You want to clean and wash down all your surfaces, utensils, and tools that are used. Uh, and um, you want to use glass, ceramic pottery, or unchipped enamel pots as cooking utensils. Um, copper and stainless steel pots can, can be used, but you don't want to use pots of aluminum or cast iron or tin as those materials will leach into your products. You want to use pure water, um, filtered or distilled water. Um, if you live in Eugene and all you have is tap water, we have really good water here. It's not heavily, heavily chlorinated. It's not fluoride. Um, so if that's all you have is tap water, um, other than aromatherapy, which I always do distilled, um, you can get away with it. Um, you want to have, this is probably one of my single most important advice for making herbal products, have your jars and your lids together that match prior to making a product. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell you how many times I have been in the, thinking I had enough jars or had enough lids or those particular lids fit that particular jar and be have a whole batch of something and realize that I didn't so <laughs> um, uh, so the other thing that you want to do is have everything properly identified harvested prepared and labeled and then you want to write down your um, your recipes and when you store your herbs Glass is preferable to plastic. If you can get dark or colored glass, um, that's ideal. Or if you only have clear glass, you can cover the outside of your jar with paper. Um, if um, yeah. you want to um, cover it tightly and keep in a cool place away from sunlight. You can... Um, you can use um, some herbs. You can use a disinfectant or a piece of charcoal. Sometimes can be a good natural dis uh, disinfectant if if it's a herb that like mullein or comfrey that tends to hand, ha ha have a lot of moisture. Most of the time, you shouldn't need to if everything's dried properly. You want to label your container properly with the name of the plant, the date it was collected, the location of where it was collected, and the name of the plant and the parts used. So the name of the plant, the date it was collected, the location of where it was collected, and the name of the plant and the parts used. Um, for, for medicines, you want to further label what condition it was used for, although we can't really do that if we're selling stuff because of FDA regs, but if you're making these for yourself or whatever, your family. Um, the method of preparation, the direction or dosage, if there's any contraindications or special precautions, your, um, the date, or if there is an expiration date, I'll go over. Um, uh, in general, properly stored and dried plants are generally good for about one season or one year. Um, they still, they are, they don't go bad in the sense of you have to throw them out because they will harm you. They will just lose potency, flavor, color, consistency over a period of time. 
All right, is this another good break? Probably another. We got about nine minutes. That was about nine minutes? Ten. Okay.